mm. compound. And the um, the Iboga piece is my favorite of the season. I mean, I, I wish it could be a feature length documentary. I think it's so interesting. Uh, and I thought it was, you know, like I said, one of the most beautiful rituals I'd ever seen. So yeah. Um, I what think, prevents yeah. you from, from making a feature length documentary? <sighs> I mean, I, I've tried, I pitched, you know, that's the thing. It's, there's so much interest in this stuff, yeah. but the interest is a little different from the way I'm interested in it. Like the, like, you know, Netflix is doing a Michael Pollan thing and mm -hmm. that's great. That's good. That's going to educate a lot of people. I certainly don't object to it, but it's a very, you know, because the emphasis of that is explicitly clinical, it's a little bit more digestible for people. Yeah. Whereas, you know, I, I pitched my Aboga documentary to Netflix at a meeting and they told me, that they're not interested in any stories about Africa. Wow. Why? The head of their, their head of their documentary department told me that. Why? I don't think you would say that this was in 2018. I don't think you would say that today, <laughs> but uh, that is what he told me in 2018. Categorically, no stories about Categorically, Africa. nothing about Africa. The whole continent is off limits. <laughs> for That's so weird. It's extremely weird and disturbing. And, and yeah. it's like, just nothing, nothing can, you're just saying no to any, but so they, they were not receptive to a lot of these things. And people say, well, what, why are you with that dumpster fire of a company vice? And it's like, because it's expensive to make documentaries and I care very much about this and I will take money to make these projects from whoever will give it to me. So if HBO or Netflix wants to give me money, uh, I would love to do longer projects. I'd love to do other things, but at the moment I'm working with the resources that I have, it's very expensive to do these projects. And so uh, as much as I might prefer to be doing it somewhere else, I'm grateful to have the opportunity to do it at all. All right, well, if HBO is listening, here's your opportunity. Uh, yes. <laughs> wow, um, do you plan on doing another season? No. No, so this will be I mean, the last one. This will be the last one. It's, it's too, uh, you know, it, I, I think people don't understand how hard it is to do something mm -hmm. like this. It's actually, I really, I think people should go out and try to make things themselves. I think it's really important for people to make stuff. So they gain a little bit of empathy for how difficult it is to do something like this, mm -hmm. because uh, it's just, you know, it is, it was literally maddening for people. So uh, someone on the crew had a, you know, serious, had to leave because they psychologically couldn't take it anymore. I mean, another person who's working, I mean, tragic things happen. It was, it was very, very, very difficult for people to do this. Uh, just because of like the long, the long hours and the literal hard work or because the content was also wearing on people? Um, the risks, the, ins the, the, the unreasonable demands. I mean, I was averaging mm -hmm. 13 hours a day, seven days a week for a year. Um, I had to work like, because of the pandemic, I had to work, in order to finish the project, I had to work unpaid for four months. Oh, wow. Like just insanity. Like this is a, a pat, it basically became uh, a labor of love mm -hmm. um, in, a, in a company that was providing absolutely no support. So it was not, um, it was not an ideal situation. And um, a lot of the people that worked on it went above and beyond what should have been demanded of them to make it possible. And so it's not even just about me, it's about what I can ask of the people that I work with because it was extremely taxing uh, and even traumatizing for some of the people that, I mean, this stuff is really, you know, I think it's, when you look at something through a TV screen or a computer screen, it's very easy to not mm -hmm. recognize the reality of what you're looking at. And, uh, and this is real. Yeah, no, that's, that's amazing. I'm, I'm glad you said all of that. And there's definitely, I don't know the stats. I don't know how many people watch this, but I can tell you it's enough that uh, for season two, I was back home visiting my parents and my mom, who I would never expect to be watching Hamilton's Pharmacopoeia. It, ca it came on TV and she was like, oh, Hamilton's, do you watch this? And I was like, huh. my mom watches Hamilton's Pharmacopoeia. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it, that's the thing. It's, it's like, it's insane, you know, that just even just take, for example, the, the large scale 5 MeO DMT synthesis in Mexico, mm -hmm. you know, like, think about what that was like behind the scenes, how hard that was, yeah. you know, and, and there's no support for that. There's the opposite of support. There's interference. They told me I couldn't, you know, the legal department said, you can't do it. It's illegal. I had to hire independent legal advisors to 
in Mexico uh, to, who were working pro bono to show that it was legal to do it. So I was actually fighting against the network in order to do that. I had to pay for the transportation of all the equipment into the country. I had to organize the lab to do that along with the rest of my team. And then, you know, doing all that synthesis in an extremely short period of time under, you know, with a single camera, like this stuff is really very taxing to do. And, um, but the reward is, you know, wow, 2 million people just saw a, a viable synthetic process for the production of tryptamines like DMT and 5-MeO-DMT. If 0.001% of the people understood, that's enough to make a difference. Yeah. How, what's the best way for people who are fans of the show to support you directly? The best way to support me, and sometimes people are very nice and they'll say, like, how do I watch it to support you? I make no money from the watching of mm -hmm. the, the show. So my advice there would be watch it however you can that's most convenient for you. But I, my only thing that I would say is try to watch it somewhere that it looks good because it makes me feel bad when I see like someone has ripped it on YouTube and they've like cut out the end of an episode or there's weird mm. like soccer games cut into the middle of it to get away from copyright restrictions or something. That is, that's a little depressing because I think, oh no, 10,000 people just watched a version of the show that doesn't even have an ending. That's, they're not getting the final part of it. That's sad. Um, I would watch it on Amazon or iTunes. Um, you can, you can also watch it on YouTube by paying, I think $3, uh, for some of the episodes <clears throat> you can find ripped versions on YouTube as well, but they often have some kind of irregularity or something that I feel diminishes the viewing experience. Um, it's also on TV, Vice TV. I don't have a TV. I have no idea how people watch things on TVs. Um, do you have a TV? Not no, I don't have a TV. TV. I watch everything from my computer, and I have a projector. Yeah, yeah me too. It's the way everyone is. So this whole yeah. idea—I don't know anyone that has a TV. So, uh, so I don't even know. But if you're the, if you have a TV, I guess you can watch on the TV. <laughs> and uh, and uh, and um, and if you want to support me directly, I have a Patreon, Patreon.com/slash/Hamilton Morris. I have a podcast, uh, and that money is was extremely beneficial during the aforementioned four unpaid months uh trying to finish this project if it weren't for patreon i would have you know it would have been bad so yeah that's the, the best way to support me directly is via patreon wow so what is next for you do you have a next project what are you going to work on um coming up i think the plan is now to just do full-time chemistry for a while uh, and what does that mean what exactly are you going to be doing uh 